Hey there, this is Python trainer Ruben Lerner. So it's now May 10th, 2021, just a few days before the opening of PyCon US, by far the biggest and I'd say the most important Python conference every year. But because of the coronavirus pandemic for the second year in a row, we are running the conference online. So the good news is that anyone can go there from anywhere. You don't have to get on a plane. You don't have to worry about visas. You can just watch the conference online. And it's obviously not as good as being there in person, but we'll do our best and try to come together as a community and learn a lot. Um, I'm giving a talk and I'm also a conference sponsor through my training company. I figure it's an important thing to support the conference and the Python Software Foundation throughout the year. Um, and as a result of my being a sponsor, I actually get some free tickets to the conference. So I turned to uh, some of the longest um, standing subscribers to my Better Developers email list, and I offered them the chance to enter a raffle to get uh, any of the four tickets that I have remaining, you know, beyond mine, to go attend PyCon US 2021 online. Well, I figured I'd get a few people to email me, but I actually got a lot of people emailing me. I guess that's what happens when you have a big mailing list. So um, several hundred people emailed me and said, yeah, they'd like to be joined in the drawing. Well, now I had a problem, right? Now I have to actually do the drawing as opposed to just sort of, well, anyway, I figured that I would use a Python program to do the drawing. And in so doing, I could do this video and show you how to solve a simple problem using some Python code. So some background, I got email back from people saying, yes, they're interested in joining the drawing. And I put all those people into a single mailbox. Um, now, I happen to use Thunderbird as my email client. Um, so you can see that I'm opening up here the raffle mailbox. So I'm going to set up that file name. But now what? Like now I've got that file. What if I were to read from that file? If I do like a head of file name, I'm going to see. Oh, sorry. You know, let's just do here. I can't do that. Uh, grab this here. So if I look at the top of the file, you're going to see it's a mailbox file. It has lots of headers, lots of content there. If I do like a head of 100, see it's like headers and headers and headers and headers and headers. And then you'll finally get to the contents of the email. Um, and this is true for the hundreds of messages in this folder. So what am I supposed to do then? How am I supposed to choose things? Well, what I decided to do was write a small program that would go through this mailbox and grab the from address so that I can get information about, I can get the email addresses of all the people who are interested in it. What's the problem with doing that? Well, there's several problems. First of all, people were applying through my newsletter sending system. So the from address didn't necessarily represent their email addresses. It might represent the sort of rewritten weirdo email addresses that Drip, my newsletter sender, provides. The second thing is that um, um, some people might have responded twice or just through quirks in the newsletter sending system, I might have gotten two responses and it would not be fair for me to give two chances to someone, you know, as opposed to one chance. So what did I decide to do? So I'm going to write a program that's going to go through this mailbox. It's going to grab the reply to address rather than the from address on the assumption that the reply to address is actually going to be accurate. And if it's not there, then I'm going to grab the from address. And if we have neither, then we're sort of in trouble and there's not much I can do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all that into a set. And a set is a fantastic data structure in Python that guarantees that every element is unique. And then what I can do is I can turn that set back into a list and then use the random.choice function to grab uh, several random elements from there. So let's take this one step at a time. The first thing I want to do is go through this mailbox and grab the headers. But in order to that, I'm going to have to grab the mail files that are there. Luckily, in the Python standard library, we have the mailbox module. And if I say import mailbox, and now I can read through mailbox files. So what I can do now is I can say for one message in uh, mailbox, uh, let's do this, mailbox mbox, actually it's going to be file name, print one message. And this is actually going to go through my entire email mailbox, the raffle mailbox, and print every single message, the headers, the body, the everything. And you can see like headers, if you've never looked behind the scenes on email, you might be surprised to see how much information is in these headers. But there is a lot. And it's usually hidden from us, except for like to and from and CC and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the original message that I sent out. And then I got other, you know, obviously responses back from other people. But I'm not interested in the contents of the message. I'm interested in either the reply to or the from headers. So how can I get that? Well, luckily, 
the mailbox module and the mailbox.mbox object handles that very nicely. If I say one message.keys, I'm going to get all the different headers. And that's right, it treats the headers as key value pairs, as a dictionary. So what I can do is I can just grab one message, let's do reply to. And now I can reply, you know, get all the reply to uh, um, values. The problem is that as you can see, some of these uh, values are none. And that's because there is no reply to. People replied to me directly or emailed me directly. So how can I say to Python, if there's a reply to, they give that to me. But if there's not, try giving me the from address. Well, I could have an if statement in there. But it's easier if I just say, or one message from. Now, how does that possibly work? How is this working? Because remember that in a Boolean context, and that includes when we have an or, although well, it's typically when we have an if, but in a Boolean context, a, a, uh, an empty string is considered false, and none is considered false. So what we're basically saying here is get the value of reply to. Oh, wait, it's none. Oh, wait, it's an empty string. In either of those cases, then go on to the next thing and give me the value of from. Okay, so that's how we're able to get those values. So now I've got all these email addresses, and that's great. But I want to put them into a set. So I could say here, s equals a set. And then I could say here, you know, s dot add of that email address. And I could say, you know, print s. And that will work. But there's an easier way, or at least in my opinion, a better way to do that. What I can do is I can create a set comprehension. What I can do is I can say here, like, all addresses all addresses equals and a set comprehension looks sort of like a list comprehension well we're going to have the values that we want we're going to have here let's do this we have the expression we want to use in that top line and the second line we are going to have our iteration so what i'm basically saying here is create create a set based on mailbox.inbox you know go through all those and we're going to go through each message we're going to grab the reply to or from and sure enough, now, oh, except, of course, I didn't close the parentheses correctly. That looks like it goes there. And then we should be OK. And now if I say all addresses, there we go. Now I've got a set of them. And it's guaranteed that they are different. By the way, I'm not really interested in having my address be in there. And so I'm just going to say here all addresses. Well, actually, no, I'm just going to, you know, because I don't want to deal with uh, email addresses. And uh, anyway, we'll deal with that in just a moment. So now I have this set. And how many people are actually in this in the end? I have 91 people. So I actually got a lot of email back, but it was a lot of duplicates. So it's only 91 people. And now what I want to do is draw four names from those 91 people. So how am I going to do that? Well, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use random.choice. And I can say import random. And if I say random.choice of, let's say, ABCD, it's going to choose a random element from there. Right. So how am I going to get four? Because I have four tickets to give away. How am I going to do this? Well, I can say here for I in range four. And then I can say here, print random choice from all addresses. Fantastic, right? No, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because random.choice actually tries to use square brackets and an index to pull things out. So we get an error here saying the set object is not subscriptable. You can't use square brackets index on a set. But what I can do is I can turn to a list. So I can say here, you know, all addresses equals a list of all addresses. And now we'll get four different email addresses out of there. And I can even say here, um, well, let's just assume that my address is not going to show up. And there we go. That's how I am going to choose the four winners of my raffle. I hope this was useful. I hope you see how really using Python to read through mailboxes, files, choose random things, it's just super easy. But you have to know how to use the standard library and the built-in data structures. All right. I hope you enjoyed this and learned from it. I hope that you will be able to attend PyCon. I'm actually giving a talk there called When is an Exception Not an Exception? Warnings in Python, all about, well, warnings in Python. I'm giving two talks, two short talks at the Trainer Summit. And I'll be back here with more videos. And uh, if you want chances to do things and special deals, as well as free weekly articles about how to use Python better, definitely sign up for my Better Developers mailing list. That's at betterdevelopersweekly.com. If you have questions, comments, anything I can help you with on Python, reach out to me on Twitter, reach out to me via email, and I look forward to seeing you online and here in the next video.